Yo, play. Where is Dragon Breath ass below? That sucker's late again. The honeys are getting restless, dog. I know, kid. He's been mad bugging lately. Yo, homie. Honestly, I'm tired of waiting on old Dragon Breath below. I bet. I know just the person. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Kipo. We need you, bruh. We got a house party and no DJ. I got y'all, man. Aw, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 feels good. Feels good. <laughs> Another party saved by none other than DJ Kipo. Ladies, be loves in the house. Hell, dragon breath. You've been replaced, dog. Who you talking to? Give DJ Keepo a call for all your party needs. He DJs quinceaneras, graduations, weddings, and all other types of parties. He can be reached at 806-441-0491 or on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Well, uh, it was a long process, but we finally got the generic media studio looking exactly like we wanted. Yeah, Jonathan, it looks awesome, man. Dang, 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 Eric, dang it, dude, not again. Yep, here they come. Um, dude, I'm I'm so sick and tired of that giant lizard and giant ape fighting all the time. They wrecked our studio. Dude, why aren't you upset? Look, take it easy though, buddy. I got a trick up my sleeve. Let's call Patriot Paint and Construction. Patriot Paint and Construction? Yeah, they service commercial and residential customers, and they specialize in paint, drywall, and all types of remodeling. And best of all, they take no money up front. Are, are, dude, are they a new company or what? Actually, Jonathan, they've been in business for more than 14 years, and they're actually insured and bonded as well. Quick, quick, give me their number. I gotta call them over here right now. Give them a call at 806-544-7199, and let them know that you heard about them on the Generic Media Network. What is good? Thank you for tuning back into the JP Lopez Show. I'm your host, JP Lopez. I got a first timer here, man. He's gonna pop his cherry tonight. Uh, pop, brother. What's up, bro? What's happening? Bro? I'll let you introduce yourself, bro. Can I do it the professional style? I, of I would like you All to. Right. Hello, you ladies go. and gentlemen. My name is Robert Vasquez, the CEO <laughs> of the Success Podcast Network. There you go. And uh, so I just saw that you, is it, I didn't understand it. Yeah. Did, are you getting a new show or you brought a new guest on or a new host? So to go back, let's go back. My, my one show that success it is what it is mm -hmm. so that was just started the way it was and as we or i say we like i have a whole bunch of people working for me hey you it's know, yeah man we we, we, we. It's we. Yeah. no i i just Speak started it into existence yeah brother. a lot of people a lot of people that have come to me and say i want to do this yeah so they want and i'm like hey yeah get your own show like you want your own show i'll help you do it i'll help you build it so what myself and my 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 he's my best friend i've known him since god forever yeah third third grade he gave me my first tattoo oh sweet yeah, he stabbed me with a pencil was it a dick man it was well it was a small one so it was he, a set it, of tits it fit <laughs> <laughs> it's fit perfect no he uh yeah. he's also the sponsor he's my first sponsor oh, okay and so we started so doing he's the some, lawnmower he's service the lawnmower guy, yeah. yeah but he said uh let's do one over weightlifting and gym stuff and gym talk and fitness and i saw i heard that, that man yeah what so is stacked and jacked yeah, That's right. stacked yeah. And jacked. so we we built that one sorry i keep jumping in You're on your good, shit man. dude hey, it's just excited out, dude. yeah I'm, this is yours i'm happy it's <laughs> but his wife his wife wanted to do one also so that's the third show okay so now there's three shows under this network that i've kind of built okay so but it's just for me it's it's taking what i've done and this this talking this thing that i started to just help my brain be somewhat clear mm -hmm. now is turning into things for other people so it's like what y'all are doing here yeah and just giving other people the opportunity to build something off of what is in their head and what they want to put out there so yeah right now three shows and man it's it's just me like it's me putting it all it's together it's a lot of work bro it's a lot yeah man. like you know the normal job the normal career and then going home and trying to do this. Yeah. And I spent like three hours yesterday just trying to do artwork for us, trying to get the show published. And then it, it was just, computer wasn't working. It wasn't cooperating. Oh, that's the, that's so the worst, man. Tomorrow yeah. I got to do it because I got to publish it. Yeah. And then um, 
you know, just all the guests. I do a lot of remote interviews. I did an uh, interview a couple of days ago with a girl from Colorado that I know. She's competing. Oh, and, sweet. Yeah, so I and got figure to figure. Or... Um, yeah, it's like figure, but then it's also a pageant as well. Oh, okay. So remote interviews and just trying to get it all done, yeah. man. But, when I first started dating my wife, she was a she was getting into competing for yeah. her figure yeah. in bikini. Dude. It's brutal. Like she obviously she's tiny, but she was eating like a fucking horse, bro. Yeah. yeah. And I was I didn't understand it. Like, how are you eating so much and getting so shredded, man? Yeah. But Yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about. Yeah. That's what we're all yeah. getting into. And so we've got it <clears throat> built and we're ready to go. But again, it's technology, man. We recorded our first show. And I re went back and played it. It was horrible. Yeah, but the, it's supposed to be. The audio, like the headphones, you could hear like the static on the headphones. Yeah. The room we were in was echoing so bad. I said, you know what? We're doing this again. This is this sounds horrible. Put some egg crates and I shit. know. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to go record in the closet <laughs> in with the all fucking, our clothes. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> shower together. <laughs> Let's do this again. Man. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. But I, I'm so happy to have you on because, um, you know, the success podcast, you know, yeah. um, but... I just want to pick your brain a little bit okay. because in my in my mind, you know, the um, I call bullshit all the time. You yeah. know, it, it's hard for me to see something on the news and just I oh take it for its truth. Right. You know what I mean? So here lately, everything is like um, toxic masculinity, right? And everything is uh, well, make sure you know your mental health is there. Yeah, I think that's a fucking cop out, bro. Yeah, like. Dude, man the fuck up. Stop right. being a bitch. Put right. in the work. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not lucky. Yeah. Because I'm 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 successful. I'm not lucky. Mm -hmm. Like I, I worked for it. Like and I'm happy to have you on here to just, you know, to pick your yeah. brain and talk about that shit, man. A lot of that for every episode. Okay, so let me put it this way. Um, a lot of things have happened in this past couple of years. Yeah. A lot. And the only way that I was able to get get it out of my body and in my brain, because for me, it, it changed me completely. So when you go back and you listen to my stuff, it's like a, it, it almost tells its own story, right? Yeah, yeah. And it put me in a very, very vulnerable state and almost went like, I don't even like to go back and listen to it. You've never been there before. I'm. I'm not this bad mm -hmm. in that state of a, of in my head, not understanding what has what's going on. How am I going to get out of this mess? How am I going to sort this out? I'd never been this bad before. Yeah, yeah. And so what I had to do was I had to man just use like you said, you know, all the same words you just said. I had to do that to myself to finally get out of it and say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like I'm through. Like you're right. We're going to put in this work. And we're going to get through this. So when you know you're talking about the mental health, now it's a different the success page. That's what it's about is this mental health. But enough of the sissiness. Yeah, enough exactly. Of the baby. Yeah. Like we, we've all gone through something. So let's talk about how we get out of it. Yeah. You know, because I've also had some people come male friends and you talked about um, uh, there, there was one where uh, my show, the surfers mentality that. Okay? That was over a TED talk that I was watching on YouTube when I was folding, folding laundry. And the guy's like, yeah, I mean, you got to have this surfer's mentality. You ride the wave and you ride it and it's going to crash. But eventually there's another one you get back on it. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. And so, you know, my guy's like, man, I know, but I don't just, I, what if that wave goes bad? And what if that, wave, you know, why are you crying about the wave, man? Ride it, ride the wave, see what happens. And if it crashes, get on another one and just keep going. Exactly. That's all it is. Yeah. And so, but for me, I had to get through that ugly, ugly phase because if I couldn't get through it, I would, how can I help somebody else out? And the biggest part is I had to help. So now I got to pass it on mm -hmm. to somebody else. That's the only reason why I kind of hit this, this level of when you talk about that. Uh, Just grinding, word? dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, but you know, if we're going to cry about it, I did, I cried out about it, cried about it a little bit, mm. but I had to get rid of it. Yeah. You know? It was like this disease in my body and I had to get rid of it, but I can only get through it with my words. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't drink myself to death with it. I tried once. It didn't work. No. I mean, it was bad. Mm -hmm. That's how I tried it. It didn't work. And then so that's the only way I let it out. I'm not going to rage. You, you, you sweep that shit it. under the rug. Yeah. The rug's only just going to get taller. That's bro. all it is. Your problems are going to get taller. That's all it is. And I owe that to my dad. Yeah. Um, my dad, hard nosed fucking was, I'm not your friend yeah. type father figure. Yeah. And, and, uh, 
I strive to make him proud my whole fucking life. Right. And um, he was always like, you'll never fucking cry about what life gives you. Just fucking take it in stride. Yeah. And you work for what you got. Exactly. He's like, hard work will get you anywhere. Yeah. And he was right, man, because I worked my ass off to get my career where it's at, man. Yeah. And and I'm not speaking about the podcast, but <clears throat> dude, if off off the show, I'll I'll tell you all the hurdles I had to jump to just exactly. get where I'm at in my position at, at work, man. And it was it was almost to the point where I was like, fuck it, career change, I give up. Yeah. And then it was that mentality that I was like, you know what? No, I'm not a little bitch. Like, and then God gave me that, you know. Right. Well, yeah. that's the hardest part for me to relay sometimes because you know as a dad now of two boys yeah i cannot let them sit there and think that it's all going to be handed to them oh no i'm not going to do it i'm I'm not going to just let them walk around and think hey my parents are going to give me everything because of their situation that they're in you know mom over here dad over here so i'm going to have an easy life you're not going to have an easy life you're going to have to work for every single thing and so they have seen my own struggles. Mm-hmm. And of course it came, it comes out in my words, but it's like, you're going to know, you're going to go through the hard stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so this is what we do to get out of it. So, you know, my kids, one of mine, he's not, he's not like me. He's, he's my little athlete, but my oldest, he's a little bit there in the same way I am. So we do a lot of talking about this stuff, but I just tell him nobody's going to ever hand you anything. No. So. No one owes you anything. Yeah, we got it. And oh, man, that's what I use. I don't know you jack right now. I don't owe you a single thing. I don't have to be nice to you. Yeah. You know, all I have to do is provide you some clothing and some food and a place to sleep. You know, do your basics, right? But I'm not going to hand you anything. And that's that's his dad. Right. Can you imagine the world? Exactly. The world doesn't owe you shit. Exactly. Yeah. This is what I say every day at work to my own kids, my students. They're not going to hand you hand you anything. So it's I, the same thing. Every I don't day. know. I don't know the agenda of getting these kids so soft, but it's working, bro. Like, <sighs> it's working, yeah. and we've got to fight against it. Like, if if you are a father to any of these young children, you've got to fight against it, man, and and make them tough, tough young men. Like, it's, to me, it's the screens. Yeah, the screens have taken over, and everybody's got the bent neck syndrome because they're always looking down. Yeah. It's, it's, I see, man, I'm walking down the hall and I see some of my kids and they just walk like that. Cause um, they're so used to looking down while they're doing everything. And it's, they don't want to do anything else. It's rough, man. I, it's a battle every day. So my son is now at tech, but right. his senior year at Coronado. So uh freshman through junior year, he had an awesome coach, a badass right. coach. They went, they went almost, state every year they were like one or two games from state every year he just leaves bro my my son's senior year right. he just leaves and the new coach is an old tech player that that's from coronado um i'm looking at because our wives are here yeah. but um <laughs> when he had the team meeting very first day of school yeah he's walking around the cafeteria like this oh the, yeah. the coach bro the head yeah. coach and I'm like, oh, this team's gonna suck. Right. And yeah, like that's they were the first horrible. impression you're giving. Yeah. That's more important. Like he and he's like, he's like, can't be bothered. And then he's t- it's his turn to talk, and he 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 holds the phone to his chest and he yeah. starts talking, and then he's back to scrolling on his phone. I have no idea what the hell was that important. Right. In your phone, you've got parents that you are just now meeting for the first time, and yeah, the whole time he's just in his phone. Yeah. It's it's a, it gives off something that you're not important. So what does it matter? Yeah. What's yeah. here is more important. And so I, I get made fun of a lot. Of, I carry two phones. That's how I do it, you know. But we'll, we'll just, yeah. One for the plug. <laughs> one for the plug. One for the host. <laughs> Man, that conversation. <laughs> that conversation. But that's another one, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, one of them is my work phone. Everybody has that number. Yeah. Every single person I've worked with has that number. And the other one is my personal one. Like only certain people, the important ones are on. That's when you're on. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> and, uh, but that's that's yeah. the one. But the thing about it is, is if I'm not in my phones, I'm sitting down on the computer. And I got people everywhere stopping me for everything. And you're right. I have to stop what I'm doing because then I give off the impression I don't care. 
but I have to care. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. And that's the thing is people don't see it this way. It's always just like, boom, in your face. You're trying yeah. to talk to them. They got it in your face. I'm guilty of it. I won't lie, but it, man, it's these things are, I'm like, you guys got to get outside. Let's go throw a baseball, man. Yeah. Let's yeah. go throw the football around. And I don't care if you got to run, you know, two foot route. We're going to do it over and over and over <laughs> again until, you know, but I mean, that's the thing. That's how we grew up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we went to my parents' house today and I was telling her, I was like, look at that rim. It's all busted because we played basketball on that thing all night long. There's no backboard anymore. There's no, there's no net. And it was just fine when we were using it. Yes, yeah. that's what it's about, man. It's yeah. not like that anymore. It's crazy. So we had, you know, I grew up with, with video games. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I never played video games because I played the shit out of them. Yeah. But, dude, we lived on the blacktop, like, <sighs> all the time. All, like, riding bikes on the blacktop, playing football, playing basketball yeah. all the time, dude. And that's a thing of the past, man. You don't see it. No, you don't see it. It's crazy because I remember we used to drive around and look for the empty one, and you couldn't find it. Oh yeah, yeah. And now you drive around and you're like, they're all down, empty. they're all dead. Yeah. Nobody's on them. Look at that nice court because nobody plays on it. <laughs> Stupid man. Like get out there and do something. <laughs> well, man, I'm gonna. I got some questions that I wanted to ask you, bro. Right. And um, I'll just jump into it. So, what made you want to start this podcast, bro? Dude, uh, I've been hearing that word for a long time. For a long time. And I never understood it. And I saw somebody doing it just, just like what we're doing. Because, you know, all this comes out of talk radio, right? Mm -hmm. And the word audio blog and everything that came from it. Those words were intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, how I need to be. That's something that I shouldn't be doing. And I know that sounds crazy. I, I'm not the kind of guy that does that. But I, 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 need, to, I need to know about it. And so the more I kind of researched and went into it. And then, you know, I would watch other people do it. And I thought they were cool. Again, this thing. But I thought uh, I started getting into announcing. So I would announce the, the starting lineups like at school. Oh, okay. You know, so yeah. I'd be like, you know, number 35, you know, the, 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 Michael the, Jordan. Right, you know? <laughs> so I started doing that. So um, I started for me, and again, I'm not trying to sound cocky, but I'm going to do it anyway. I was like, I've, this is my God given talent, is me to be able to use my voice like this. Yeah. So I said, I have to use it, but use it the right way. And so I started researching how to do a podcast and, you know, all the equipment and everything, all the cords and, you know, that whole process. And 2018, I really went into it hard. Like I said, I got to figure this out. How can I do this? How do you talk to people? How, how can you sit here and look at someone in the eye like this? Mm -hmm. Just the little intricacies of the whole thing. So 2020, when um, the pandemic hit, I was like, I heard, well, everything is going to shut down. Da, 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 da. Went to Guitar Center, bought a mixing board. And I'm gonna say, here we go. About the headphones, and mic. Let's record. So I just started doing it. Sweet. But again, it was my the theme of it was my it was my therapy. I had to talk this stuff out. Okay. And that's the reason why I started it. So now the title, and I don't know if you've heard my story on the title. Um, this word success. It was just something that's always stuck to me. But the other part of it is what it is. If you look that up, so many people call that line stupid. It's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. And that's what somebody pretty close to me told me. That is the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. Anybody who uses that line is an idiot. That was the exact same thing. It is what it is. It is what it is. Because I was just talking about something normal. And I said, yeah, man, it is what it is. And I got that in return. And I was like, what? That's what you're going to tell me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now this, that I use that now kind of as a throwback to say, you're right. It is what it is. It's the most, but this is what's going to make me successful yeah this yeah little line and so that's where it came from and that's where my whole show started and i was just going to just self-talk everything that i needed to talk about but that was going to end up in the most successful way that i thought i could help somebody else out that's really where it came from that's cool um i'll have to disagree the most stupidest <sighs> phrase ever is at the end of the day at the end of the day god damn <laughs> fucking hate at the end of the day no 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 day shut the fuck up at the end of the day and they use it for everything over and exactly, over at dude. the end of the day this is what this yeah. means well at the end of the day it is what it is <laughs> that's right i hate that you're right now i hate that one too i'm gonna make a show about that at the end of the day <laughs> so yeah that's why i say i disagree there yeah, so. I, I can agree with that one too but um so you start your podcast right, right. Um, are you in your mindset? Are you just specifically thinking this is a solo podcast or are you automatically thinking like, I'm going to interview guests. I'm going to, 
It did. It started off as a solo. Solo. Yeah. Completely 100%. Um, I, th- then the only reason why I wanted to do this was because I wanted this to be a complete standalone. And this, as goofy as this is going to sound too, man, like I had to even change my voice. I, I, like I worked on changing my voice mm-hmm. because I wanted it sound like I wanted it to be as professional as I possibly okay. could. And, and some people are saying, well, why'd you do that? Be yourself. I get it. I know who I know who I am, but I needed to come across with something legit. That was just in my head. Yeah. You yeah. know, to, if I'm going to do this, I got to gain the respect of all these other podcasters out here. Whoever's listening, who's going to listen to my show? Well, this guy doesn't. He's it was a part of your targeting. Yeah. Yeah. That's who it was. Yeah. But I knew eventually I wanted to talk to somebody else. Okay. Because you can only talk you know, by yourself for so long, you know? Well, that's what I was going to yeah. say is because if you automatically thought it was a solo podcast, you, ha- you must have had a bunch of shit to talk about. At first, yeah. Yeah. But then it was like, because, you know, like when I, when I heard your solo stuff versus your group stuff. Yeah. The dynamic of what you sound like. Versus, you know, when you got all your boys. Yeah, I was a pussy. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. But that's the vulnerable. That's that you're putting out all that vulnerability out there, and you're showing that side of you that nobody gets to see. Yeah. But yeah. that's huge because for me, it's it's a huge thing of respect. You know, I hear what you do, and I was like, dude, this guy right here. That's why I'm like, man, I'm all about this man's show right now. So. Awesome, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I appreciate it, and you know what? You honestly were the first person. To shout me out. Oh, man. And I owe you forever gratitude Dude. towards you, man, and, and your podcast, bro. I appreciate it. And, I mean, sh- my wife is here. She'll tell you, man, like, it made my fucking week, dude. Yeah. You know, because it, uh, it was published. It was out there oh, in yeah. the world to hear, like, go check out JP Lopez show. Yeah. And, dude, like, I know, I've, I know I basically sucked your dick on the comments, <laughs> man, but legit bro yeah. you made my week man bro it's a big thing um i i talk about certain people i call them my famous friends yeah right you're one of them and the reason why i say this is because i'm gonna say what we do we put in our voices out there right and i'm gonna tell you right now this <laughs> this is hard for me this is hard for me right now because i want to be who i want to be right now with you but i can't because number one I can't speak as freely as you can. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I have so many people yeah, that are listening to me. And because of what I do in my job, I can only use certain kind of language. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I get that. And yeah. this is what's hard for me because I don't always do that. I enjoy being free and saying what I want to say. Yeah. So what you do versus what I do is it's we're on the same level. We're on the same spectrum. But, dude, it's work, man. And how can you not... For me, it's, it's, an ex, it's an example for others who say, how free do you want to be? Check this dude out. Yeah. And, man, I tell everybody, you don't even know these guys. But when, you, when you're done, those are your homies right there. That, I tell everybody, man, you want to freaking laugh? Put this stuff on. Because how can you watch Dave, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy? How can you watch? You don't know any of those guys. Yeah. But when you leave, what? Those are your boys on TV. Yeah. Go, go listen to JP. You got your boys right there. That's man. awesome, bro. And I appreciate that. But to, to, to bring that story, some truth to that story, right. what, you, what you just said, I'm a kid, man, yeah. and my grandpa is a deacon for a Catholic church, right. like my whole life. And I'm probably like, I don't know, maybe fourth or fifth grade at the time. So I only know my grandpa the way he is at home with me, right. which is he's loving, he's <laughs> cool as shit, yeah. but he's still, you know, yeah. straightforward. Then I know him in the in the church, which he's like, you know, no bullshit. Yeah. But then I finally was around him when he was with his boys. Yeah, man. And I was like, who the <laughs> fuck is this guy? Like, you know, he was just busting balls and yeah. like, you know, just being doing men shit, you know, right. when, yeah. when we're around our friends. And I was like. Holy like grandpa's cool, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's that's what. I wish that's what I can't wait to do. Yeah. Because for some reason, God willing, this thing pops off. If I can make a living, good God. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'm letting it go. Awesome, I am man. letting it all go. And I you know, I don't know if I could do what you do. Because you get me in everything. Yeah. Like you talk to 
friends from like elementary and they'll be like, he was that fucking kid yeah. when he was young. Yeah. Like he's always been this. Yeah. And I don't know if I could, you know, fucking put the Superman uh, eight to five on yeah. and, and yeah, it, it's, it's hard, dude. Yeah. It's hard because if you know what you do, when you know, you know me out of the whatever. Yeah. Was I say when I take the monkey suit off, I let, I mean, I'm just me. And I express the way I want to express. And everybody should be able to do that. But it's <clears throat> it's a form of, if I, if I go to go to work and tell these kids, dude, you can't be talking like that. And it's not because I have something against it, but it, these kids are growing. Yeah. And I need to teach them how to be when they're in the workforce or whatever it is. You're growing up, blah, blah, blah. Representing yourself, you know, you know, protecting your name, building your name, building your character, whatever. And at one point, you want to say whatever you do it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, but that's just what we do. I can't do it myself. Yeah. And it's it's crazy because, you know, on the on this new show, um, my buddy, he's the same way. He's just letting it go and I don't do that. <laughs> you know, I keep it reserved. <laughs> well, I mean, hey man, um it works, bro. Right. And, and and I get it. Yeah. I know it's a restriction, but it's it's still working, bro. Yeah. And it's still good shit. And my next question is I don't know nothing about your podcast. Right. I'm just now hearing the JP Lopez show. I want to know about the success podcast. Right. What should I listen? What episode should I listen to first? Man, that's a good question, dude. That is a good question. I would have to say there's one that um, really stick out in my head. Uh, it's about smoothing the tablecloth. Um, smoothing the tablecloth I took from my from my mom. Uh, dining room table that we sit in. She would always throw down a fresh tablecloth. And um, she would always tell me, smooth it off. And I just, you know, I'm like, whatever. Because it was all folded. It was all folded, yeah. right? And, and I remember I was griping one time about it because I didn't, it was a t I didn't want to do it. And she said, um, smooth, smooth it out. And I'm like, but why? We're going to sit down and get it all wrinkled again. And she said, no, smooth it out like your bad attitude. Get rid of it. I don't know why that hit me it in my stuck. head. It stuck. Yeah. And so I was like, that's your problems. You know, these are your problems. So we're going to smooth this whole thing out. Yeah. And, 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 and there it went. And so I took it from there and that's where I started going. And that one really, for me, hit pretty hard. And that's the one where I got emails from people. Like people I didn't even know emailed me. Dude, I, I listened to this. This was cool. I never thought of it this way. You know, I got just, I said, just, you know, I had one guy who's like, I just threw everything on the table. And just started like trying to smooth, like I gotta fix fix this and fix this. So every wrinkle is like a problem and, and we're getting rid of it. That was one of my big ones. I never thought it would be. I and really didn't. It God blessed you with with that episode, with that idea, right? Right. It it was God's way of of communicating to people, right? Yeah. It just blows my mind that people give a shit about what you have to say what I got to say. Yeah. And it, it's so, I, I keep saying this, like it's so hard to have someone care about what you're doing. And that one person that reached out to you, whoever it was, dude, that's got to hit you in your feels, yeah. man. It has I, to. I, I choked up a little bit yeah. because I said, who's this person? And they're thanking me. Don't even know who they are. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, what? And, and, and I've gotten bad ones. You know, I, I did an hey, episode about that. Who, what, what, who says or how how did it go? Um, what makes you think you they know? They still listened yeah. and they took the time to badmouth you. Right. That's still, still got your point, yeah, man. Exactly. <laughs> still got your numbers. Exactly, man. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But it was you cared enough to listen and say your show sucks. And you cared enough to even type it and yeah. said your show sucks. Yeah. Thank I, you. I appreciate thank that. you for listening. Yeah, and I've yeah. said that many times. Say thank you. Because you even if you didn't like it, I appreciate you awesome. tremendously. Hell That's yeah, bro. It is, man. It's just nothing but love, really. Yeah. There's nothing but love to anybody who's going to listen and it's nothing but love to even if you hate my stuff even if you think it sucks and i've got those dude your podcast sucks and i'm probably never going to listen to it again but you said probably cool, cool deal that's it you I know appreciate what it. um fuck your mother yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. as much as i want to yeah. say that too yeah, it doesn't but, bother me anymore it really doesn't yeah um because the more the good that i get out of it that's what i feed off of yeah Everybody can be negative. You can be negative all you want. But, but those negative comments are always from someone that's private 
that's yeah. got zero followers, that's yeah. got zero posts, those are bots, man. Yeah. I'm just like, whatever, man. Yeah. Get get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But now that I'm on YouTube, I haven't got a negative comment yet, but I know it's coming, dude. Oh, it's all and right. I know it's gonna just grind it, like yeah. it's it's yeah. gonna stab and then just yeah. twist that knife and I'm gonna be like, oh yeah. you're gonna pull yeah. it out real slow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not but, it's like taking your prostate with your doctor. <laughs> Better take that Super Bowl <laughs> ring off, I'm, Doc. I'm not saying anything at all. That I, <laughs> I'm not missing any. No discussion on that. No comment. I just came for a root canal. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, you just going to leave me like this? Now you <laughs> take me out to eat? I have nothing. You don't even, like, you got to go get a towel. You got to go then, get your own no, towel. No, you just throw a box of Kleenex at me. Get out. <laughs> no, I said too much now. <laughs> Hey, man, let's take a real quick break, bro. Yeah, we'll come back, good. man. And when we come back, man, we'll get, we, you know, we, we kind of pussyfoot around. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the thick of it. Let's do it. All right, All man, right. we'll come right back. Cool. Hey, man, I don't think we should be out here on the farm so late. Can't the goats and sheep wait to be taken care of, like, till tomorrow? Normally, yes. But, you know, that thing has been lurking around town lately. <sighs> okay, well, let's, let's just hurry. It's cold, and I'm, I'm scared of the dark. Okay, let's just get the animals put in the... Oh, no. Oh, man, it's the... Chupacabro. Yo, what's good, my guys? Just thought I'd drop in on my favorite bras. Maybe see if you dudes had anything I could nosh on. Please, bro, don't eat our goats. Yeah, man. Please, spare the little cuties. Ew, that's way harsh, my dogs. What kind of mythical urban legend do you take me for? I need something much less gnarly than barn animals. Bro, then we got just the thing for you. Yeah, man. Why don't you check out Tigre Burritos? Tigre Burritos? Nice. Like, what kind of grinders would I be partaking in? Well, they offer breakfast burrito combinations that include sausage, chorizo, potato, and egg. And they offer lunch burritos that include beef and chicken fajitas, barbacoa, carne guisada, chile verde, and more. And if you're feeling something other than a burrito, they also serve quesadillas and menudo. Dude, that's wicked perfect for when the chupacabro had too many cervezas the night before and wakes up feeling all goose and whatnot. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, Theta Burritos is open Tuesday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., and they're located at 720 Highway 62 in Wolford, Texas. Yeah, go terrorize them instead of us. Oh, I'm so stoked to stuff my pie hole with delish comida. I always thought you guys were some kind of posers, but you're really some OGs for hipping me to Tigre Burritos. I'm going to go and pick up my Betty right now and cruise on down there. Thanks, Broseph. No problem, Chupacabro. Shaka. Don't do that. Uh, sorry. There we go. And we're back, man. So, uh, like I said, man, now you now you got a taste of it, bro. Now, now you know that the uh, off-air off combos I always wondered. is just like that day with, like, they need a Patreon for that shit. I know shit. we do because we. I don't want to talk about that <laughs> mess right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna jump right into it, bro. Do, um, it. do you have a motto or a philosophy that you live by? Now, I do. I do. I have to have. I, it's what I say at the end of every show. What I what I have to say, but I. When I say it, like I'm trying to get something across, but I really mean it because I gotta have it for me. Yeah. Right. Um, because what I always say is, you know, um, you matter, your priority, you're number one. And when you're good for yourself, you're gonna be good for others. Um, it's that's true. awesome, bro. It's that, true. That's badass. Yeah, I, that's what I said at the end of every show. I appreciate that, man. Because it, it, I had to say something meaningful. Because how many people, how many people actually look at themselves and say, dude, I'm number one. Like I matter. Mm -hmm. I matter. Like, I'm priority. And that's not being selfish. But you do that, then you are good for you. You're good for you. You can do... How are you good for anyone else if you're that's not right. good for yourself? That's right. Yeah. 100%. And I've, I've been there, you know, being at, at complete the other side of the spectrum. And I saw what it did. And I saw how people looked at me. Yeah. And they don't want to be around me. Like, come on, man. Was, and like you talked about earlier, this masculinity, I was weak. And I showed that. Don't nobody want to be around that guy. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to walk around here like you're just this badass. And I'm just going to say that. You don't have to walk around like that, but you can walk with some confidence. And I don't care if the world's falling apart around you. Be good for you. Because, you know, the screaming and yelling and fighting and arguing, you can't think straight. 
Mm -hmm. You think, start thinking straight, then you can start lining stuff out and solve some problems, man. Well, I, I'll, I'll stop and, and, and put my two cents in. The negativity, that, that black cloud, God. It, it builds and it just, it tears you apart. Yeah. Uh, it makes you think of scenarios in your life that's never gonna fucking happen. It's gonna give. It's just gonna just be so toxic to right. to your brain, like, and it's it's for nothing. Yeah. Like it's for nothing. I don't I don't get that that guy that comes into work every morning pissed off because he's not a morning person. I'm like, bro, you know you gotta be here at seven a.m. Yeah. Fucking cheer the fuck up. That's right. Like your mentality and your fucking attitude is like. Rubbing off on everybody, and people hate fucking being around you exactly. in the morning. Exactly. That's why I come in in the morning. If I get up, if I'm going to my early shift, dude, I'm that asshole. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. it doesn't make sense to be so negative, so like not driven, and so I'm not a morning person. Because starting your day like that is only setting you, yourself up yeah. for failure. Yeah. I I have my alarm set for three o'clock every day people are like why are you getting up so early man yeah but that's just what i have i mean i have to drive 45 minutes to work so that's one reason but i have to get up that early so i can start getting my brain mentally ready to go and i'll throw it every morning dude i get on the youtube i get on the youtube <laughs> that's where you showed your age that's bro. where i showed you, you showed your on fucking age. the youtube <laughs> i got on the <laughs> myspace <laughs> I got on the YouTube. I get on the YouTube. See, I can't say it without not leaving that in there. But dude, I'm, I got to put on something. So right now, my my man, dude, this is I'm on a David Goggins kick. Oh, okay. And I throw David Goggins on every morning, and I've watched the same YouTube videos. Of, but it's just it's not because you've read his books. Oh man, dude, read yeah. his books. I bought the audio book. I mean, That's it's cool, it's man. it's really it's it's kind of, it's just a brutal story. But a lot of it is just that the callousing of the mind is what he's disciplined like yeah. a motherfucker. But, that, but when he talks about that callousing of the mind, whole new level of thinking. Because, you know, I was, of course, always thinking about the calluses on your hands. Yeah. You know, from training. You, yeah. You, know, you get those calluses. And I remember I, was, I would always pick at them. But, know? okay, it's yeah. funny that you say that. And it's great that you say that. So we start lifting in middle school, yeah. right? And you start getting these calluses and, you, and they hurt. Yeah. And, you're, and you're a little bitch. And yeah. you're like, ah. Oh. And then in high school... Showing them, you're, showing them off. <laughs> no, but in high school, you're powerlifting yeah. each. You're yeah. lifting more weight than you ever lifted in your mm -hmm. life, and it's nothing. No big deal. But going back to seventh grade, weightlifting, and you've been like, ah, oh, that's awesome that you yeah. put that. Yeah. It's, yeah. The same, it's the same concept. So callousing of your mind, you know, I had to take that concept for me to really say, you know what? I'm, I'm done. Like, whatever has been beating me down, I'm done. And now, give me something else. And I got you, because that ain't gonna mess with me either. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not saying that I've already walked into 2023, like I was telling you earlier, um, um, off the mic, you know, this whole new year, new me. That's never been me. I always thought that was the most stupidest thing ever. Yeah. But this time I'm taking it serious, because I said, now I gotta see what I can do when I say, whatever's happened before, I got it now. Like, I gotta see what I'm gonna do now. Throw me a challenge, I wish you would. Yeah. You know, because I got you. Let's go. And that's just the way it is. Because I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. breakfast. Yes. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? Because <laughs> you only do the bad that breast stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm lacking motivation right yeah. now. Uh, I'm, a young, I'm a young man. Okay. And uh, I want to do something with my life. I just don't know what. And I'm, I'm really lacking motivation. And I'm really lacking... A positive circle around me. What's your advice for me, man? Because I want to turn my life around for the good, and that's not to say my life around my life right now is shit. But I want to success. I want to be successful in my life. Right. This is on a daily. Man. I have these conversations on a daily because I got these kids who only see life one way, getting in trouble all the time, you know, and it usually. Whenever somebody has come, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Hell, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those things. I, I can go two ways with this. I can go you and my way and stop being a little, you know, mm -hmm. what, what do you want to do? What's bothering you? What, what's wrong? Like, I always, try to, I, I always try to go to the point of, well, what's wrong? 
What do you feel? What's hurting? Like, what is hurting right now? What's keeping you from saying, I, I need to do? What are you afraid of? So it's either going to be, what's hurting or what are you afraid of? Those are my two questions I always ask my kids. And I have to read them. So what's hurting? Tell me what's hurting in your head. Sometimes with me, you know, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't feel confident. I want to play football, but I'm scared. So what are you scared of? What are you scared of when, you know, how, oh, I don't, I'm afraid of how hard I'm going to get hit. You know, I have teachers that come up to me. And I just, I don't know if I want to be a teacher anymore. Why? Because I can't, I can't get my kids under control. Okay? So let's start here. Let's start here and say, you can't get your kids under control, so what do we need to do to make it happen? I try not to let people sit in the problem too long. What's your problem? Can't get my kids to behave. All right, let's talk about how we do this. So let's lay this out. So I really, when people come and ask me for that motivation, I really try to hit them with, tell me what's wrong first. So you become a track coach. Sort of, yes. Please, let's get over the hurdles. Let's get over it. Yeah. Yeah. What hurdles are there? Let's get over it. Because if you ask me, where do you get your motivation from? Or I need that motive. Why don't I wake up at three? I don't, who, who wants to get up at three? Nobody. No I don't. Yeah. But in the morning, I already know what my challenges are. I got to do this. I got to do that. What's in my way? Okay. So I need, okay. Now I know what I got and what I don't want to do. Now I got to figure out how to get that done. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I know I got to go do this and I got, oh God, I got this in front of me. I don't want to do it. Well, get up and go. Just get up and do it. Like right now, dude, I'll be honest with you. I haven't picked up a weight in probably about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And it's killing me. I haven't had the motivation for it. I know it's going to hurt, but I also know what I'm going to feel like when I start. And then here we go. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, come on. You, you just got to go. You got to go. You you're going to go. hey, regret that leg day dump. Bro. God, dude. That's why they got those <laughs> bars, man. They got the bars in the stalls. <laughs> so, man, every every first timer, man, they, uh, they, they get this question, bro. And, and I'm going to have to ask it, bro. Let's do it. What's your favorite feel-good memory? How many do I get? How many answers can I do? Hey, man, whatever you want to give okay. me, man. All right. um, first and foremost, you always got to, I got to shout out the birth of my kids, man. Changed my life. Right? Yeah. My, my two sons. Um, feel good, everything. You got blessed, bro. Dude. Like, I've known, there's two friends that I, I'm real cool with that have tried. They're on their, like, fourth and fifth time. Yeah. And they've got nothing but girls. Yeah. Like, you've got Real blessed. Two, two boys, yeah. two boys, and they're fantastic, man. And and I always got to talk about them and not break down because that's what happens. So I didn't do it this time. Good, good to go. Yeah. No, but the other one, man, is um, man, I got to go to New York City, dude. That was on my bucket list. Oh, really? New York City, bro. Yeah. New York City. It Did was the, carrot smell like piss. Man, he smelled like every. <laughs> God. Hey, but I, let me tell you a story of what happened when we we're there. Okay, I'm walking down. I don't know what street it is. I don't know what it is. And there's these rappers, man. Rappers on the side of the sidewalk. They're just trying to give out their demos. Oh, shit. Dude, and I walk by them, and all I hear is, hey, Big Brown, get back over here. <laughs> I said, what? They call me Big Brown. They said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Texas. Hey, check out our demo. Okay, cool. And he hands it to me. I turn around and walk off. Hey, Big Brown, get back over here. That's like, cost $10. Yeah, like, well, why'd you <laughs> give, it you give it to me? Then? That's what I said. <laughs> well, why'd you give it to yeah. me? And so these people that are like, shut up, don't, don't, don't talk to them like that. Yeah. Man, forget that, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's New York City. I'm from <laughs> Texas, man. Get out of here. Call me Big Brown. Yeah. Dude, it was amazing. Yeah. Bucket list, bro. It um, was the greatest time ever. I always shit on people's, you know, parade when they're like, oh, New York City's my bucket list. Yeah. And I'm like, it's filled with trash, yeah. and rats, and it stinks like piss. Dude, it was, I, 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 yeah. And it was and all the, that. And the subway's like United Nations. Dude, it was ugly in there. Yeah. I saw... But you know how we was talking about our little story before? I saw a brother laying on the side of the sidewalk in the subway taking care of business. Oh, yeah. And, I was, and, dude, that, and that's just like the Tuesday morning that's in all New it York was. City, bro. That's all that was, man. <laughs> it was, it was, it, the reason why I wanted to go there was, number one, I had to go see the 9-11 Memorial. That was my ultimate thing that I needed yeah. to see that. But it was everything else that I would see on television, and I needed just to go feel that. Yeah. I needed to feel it, because when I saw Chicago... And I got to see the Jordan statue. That was my other bucket list. Got that done. And but I needed to feel it. Yeah. I had to feel it. I needed to feel these things that I people say you can't go do. That's my thing. I need to see and feel. So I kind of feel like you jipped me, man. Uh, but I'm coming. Okay. Yeah. You want you yeah. want another one? Yes. Yeah. I, 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 
Uh, it yeah. has to be better than that. Yeah, yeah, it has to be better than that. Because um, motherfucker, I, I lived in Boston for five. Years. I know, I know. So that's that's nothing. That's a big deal. <laughs> New York City, man. New York City, dude. I'm. <sighs> okay, so I gotta tell you this story, and this one I got laughed at so hard. Yeah, I got laughed at so hard. But I'm gonna tell it before anybody else does. So Lubbock, Texas, we're partying. Okay. And uh, we're at my apartment, the ones I cannot remember, okay? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I can't remember them. You, you can ask the guys, and they'll tell you. Um, I know Mondo was there. I know Joey was there. And <laughs> I, was, I was by myself. However, they had a lot of female friends there. Yeah. And I'm sitting on the floor of my own living room, dude. This, we laughed so hard. This one, this one was, I think this solidified us, us as friends. And it just felt so good because we just never stopped hanging out after that. <laughs> but, bro, they all had their female friends. And I'm like, dude, man, I'm, like, sitting there by myself. So I get on my phone and I put it to my ear like I'm talking to somebody. What's up, girl? Me? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in front of all these girls, Mondo calls me the phone. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it starts to <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, hello. <laughs> and it won't go off, but I'm trying to shut it off. <laughs> Good. And I'm just, they're all laughing at me, dude. It won't stop. So to this day, man, that is a good, there, there's pizza everywhere. And he's like, oh, dude, it was hilarious, man. It's like uh, that FaceTime when you try to fool them, like you glitched and yeah. shit. And yeah. like the CD fans yes. going, you're like. Yeah, yeah man, that's all. It is. <laughs> but dude, I think that's when I think back of my, because what I want to think about was all the time spent here. Yeah. And dude, there was a lot of moments spent in this this city of Lubbock. I love Lubbock, bro. Dude, I, I, there's just so many things. Yeah. And for all those, those were just, dude, I think that molded me, man. Yeah. I mean, what, what kind of a feel good moment is that? I just, it molded me, took me to a place, dude, because I, I know, I know you and I hung out a few times and I don't remember them because maybe, <laughs> maybe there was a lot involved at that time. Yeah, there was a lot of alcohol. Yeah, man. Yeah. But dude, it was just so much fun. So, you are in a position that a bunch of people strive to be in, right? Especially in your field. Right. You get that phone call that say you got the position. How good of a feeling is that for you? As like an education? Mm -hmm. It's it's one of those things that, like you said, the work was put in. But at, then at the same time, you're like, yeah, I know I got it. I yeah. got it. The safety of I have a job, number one, got it, we're good. But the other part of this is, you know what, you're right, I got it. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to go show what we can do. Time to go show how we, it's just a thing, man, that makes you feel that value. Yeah. The value. And it, it goes down to confidence. Yeah. It goes down to hard work. Exactly. That takes you a bunch of places, bro. Those two things. Confidence and hard work. I I have kids every day. This kills me, dude. They they walk around with their pants sagging all day. And I'm like, dude, you want how do people look at you and they want to take a chance on you? You, you look look what look what you're putting off. And a lot of people are gonna say, Well dude, that's just a look. I get it, man. I get it. But for now with the way the world is and the way the world is going, you know, you and I we're gonna be old someday and this is the next generation. Yeah. I, I don't want that. I don't want that taking care of me, you know? And I get it, man. I, maybe I walked around the way I did growing up and the way I looked, you know, with my starter jackets and, you know, my Air Jordans. <laughs> Bro, had all starter that jacket was the shit, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't tell you how many girls wanted to wear that damn jacket. And I thought I was the shit. Like, man, I was a senior, 1994. Here we go, I'm old now. And I had the starter jacket, okay? Michael Jordan, of course, he's playing baseball now. Yeah. But I had it. So, 94... Living in Plainview, that's when we had a we had a shooting. So you couldn't wear you couldn't wear certain colors for school. Aww. I couldn't wear my Jordans. I couldn't wear my starter jacket. None of that. You could couldn't wear. God. I was like, oh, you couldn't be fresh to death. I, <laughs> I had my long socks up here with the little Jordan yeah. logo. Had it all, man. But you had to fold them down so they didn't go all the way to your knees. It was messed up, dude. It was just messed up. I had all that mess. I had all of them. So I had it, you know, all my yeah. Jordans. And and because Cardinals is still here in Lubbock, yeah, yeah. And Cardinals was in Plainview, man. That was a time where I was getting all the kicks, yeah. all the nineties. And you know what, like, bro, we can talk sneakers oh, all dude. fucking oh, day. Yeah. And 
back then to go into on a random fucking Tuesday to go into a Foot Locker and get any shoe you wanted and ne- and not be told like, oh, that's sold out or no, that's triple the price now. Yeah. Like that was the shit, dude. It was the shit. Yeah. And granted, I mean, I didn't get a lot of them because I, I, you know, I was that freeloader on my yeah. parents' fucking <laughs> dime. And I got one pair a year, but still, man, like, you man. can go and get any damn shoe you wanted. Bro, I got one better for you. We used to get catalogs at the store. Yeah. With all the shoes. They're, they're only shipping to the dealer. They're at the store. So we get catalogs. And so you're talking about the, the, the phone posits. You're talking about the, the Barclays. The, very, the ones that, you know, Michigan wore. All those, you know, all the, the one that the retail store orders from. Right. Holy shit. So we get the catalog. Of course, this is before the internet. Yeah, yeah. And that was the internet. Right. Yeah. So I would I would call the number. We had Nike. You, you call the number. Do, 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 do. Hey, this is so-and-so from this store, right? Let me give you my store number. You give them your account number. And you say, hey, I need I need the, the, the Columbia you know, Blue Air Jordan 9, size 11. What the fuck? Okay, so we'll get it. We'll ship it to your store. Like two, three days later, it would be at the store with my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I would take that thing and hide it at the top of the shelf, and the kids would come in. Yeah, because this was like when that came out, the Columbia Nines, yeah. uh, the North, you know, all the North Carolina ones. They, I would hide them. And then his friends and family discount. Yeah, man, I wouldn't friends family <laughs> nobody. You got them? No, I'm sorry, bro. That I'm walking out with them, you know. But I'd be getting paid, and I had no money. That's oh yeah, I had yeah, no yeah. money, man. But that's how we would order them. All of them, the Air Penny. I had the first Air Pennies. I, I had all those, dude, and it was insane because I would just call the number and they would ship them to me. 100, 100 bucks. Yeah. Air Jordan 11s when it was the, when they were 110. The, so, the white and Concord. Psh, come on, man. So I, I just told you I got a sneaker. Yeah. Right? Well, there would be like mornings that I I just get up and I just go look at my shoes and they're art, bro. Yeah. But they're also yeah. nostalgia. Yeah. Like I'll go back to looking at a shoe and be like, I always wanted this shoe, and George Morales had this shoe, and I just never could afford it, and I always wanted it. You know, I do shit like that. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the next thing I know, like, the light comes on, and my wife's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, go back to bed. I know. I know. I'm taking the trip down memory lane. That's right. That's right. I have the pair, uh, 1982, Air Jordan 1, still in the closet. They're still there. Can't yeah. wear them because they'll just fall oh, yeah, apart. Crumble, but, but then '94, when they came out with the re-release of the yeah. first, they're still there too. And I just pick them up and I'll look at them. They're yellow. You got my bag. You know. have no idea how much money eBay would pay for those. Yeah, they're just there. Fuck. Yeah, they're just there, man. I mean, I'm not gonna wear them. Yeah, no. But, you yeah. know, I've I've got Elevens, dude. The Elevens were my shoe. So I, you know, all all the colors I can get, I had to have them, and they're just there. What what? Kind of pisses me off, but I think it's still cool. Is my son has all the 11s that yeah. are out, and I'm like, you have no clue how fucking cool the, these shoes were. Yeah. Like when they first came out, yeah. Like pussy status through the roof if you had this shoe. I'm telling you, man. That that's yeah. How iconic. That's how badass the shoe was, and you're just like, yeah, I got every color. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we used to remember the Space Jams came out. We took the white. In Concord, because we couldn't, I like I couldn't get them, so I put black shoe polish on the wall. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I already had another pair, yeah, so yeah. I was good to go. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm gonna mess this one up, and I'm gonna hoop like you know, in Space Jam, it's black shoe polish all on the all on the on the, on the, on the upper of the shoe, the solid white. You still have, have them? No, nah, dude. Oh, I think dude, I think they're imagine, gone. Can you imagine if you still had those? I remember yeah. looking back there at my mom's house, and it's all hard. You can't yeah. even put the shoe. Either on way, though, like you, you still had them, dude. Yeah. yeah, man, the stuff we used to do for those kids. Bro. Exactly, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But before we go, man, yeah. uh, biggest peeve <sighs> for in, anything, just dude. When people, when really people don't see what's in front of them, where's he now, man? It wears me out because I think everybody has an opportunity to be something. Something. And I'm, I get it. Things happen. Things happen to everybody. But there's always a reason to get up off the floor and go do something. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I hold myself tight to that. I, I mean, dude, right now I have a big issue folding laundry. <laughs> I hate folding laundry. But it's, it's a thing. It's like it, something that minute. Get up and fold the laundry. I hate it. But, you know, it's just... It, it's a little thing. You can always do something. That's me talking to my wife. 
<laughs> just fucking fold it. <laughs> Fuck. It takes five minutes. Just fold the laundry. <laughs> I, I, but that's my biggest pet peeve. And I think it's because I work with kids all day and I want them to succeed and I want them to do well. And dude, I've been to too many, I've been to too many jails to visit my kids. I've been to funerals to visit my kids. Um, all these things, I've lost a lot of kids, just, you know, whatever. And, and I don't want that to happen for anybody that close to me and anybody else. So I'm like, I just want people to just say, you can do whatever you want. And that cliche as it is, you can do whatever no, you want. No, you can, though. You, you can. can. So just go, you, you want to build a podcast, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to sit on the other side and record, be on the camera, well, be a cameraman. You know, my son, my son, he does the, he does my music. He does, he has his own little intro. He created all that for me. But you can do this stuff. I don't care how old you are. You know, do most, something. Most kids have iPhones. Yeah. If you want to build, if you want a podcast, you just need an iPhone. That's it. That's it. That's, it already yeah. has a mic on there. It already comes with yeah. uh, iMovie. It already comes yeah. with editing software. Yeah. Like, you can do, you can do whatever you want to do, man. You can't, yeah. that's the biggest thing for me. It's like, come on, man, seriously? Yeah. You're going to tell me you can't? Because you can say, I can't or I can't. You're going to be right either way. But it's it's got to be draining, though, to you or for you to see so much of something in a kid. Like, whether it's charisma, just so much of something, and they don't see it for themselves. Like, oh, dude, I've, I've got beautiful kids. Yeah, all my students are beautiful, all of them. They all got something that, you know, I've, I've, I've had to stand in front of, you know, groups of 300, 800, that's just the range of it. And you see everything beautiful. So when I have people say, how do I work with these kids? Like, I can't work with, you know, I'm having a hard time with a group of 15. Well, here's a group of 500 that I got to stand in front of. Mm -hmm. And I got to work with every single personality. Dude. And it's beautiful, man. These kids, dude, they will build you up. They will, you're like, dude, I'm sad or I'm mad or whatever. And they'll come up, hey, Mr. Vasquez, hey, you know, they'll give me a hug. I'm like, dude, that's cool. Yeah. Or they'll high five you, whatever, man. I mean, yeah. it's just, but when you see that thing that you know they could be better, dude, it is, man. I feel defeated sometimes. And I just want to be like, all right, come on, let's go do it again. Let's, all right, let's talk about this again. Let's go again. I will go round and round and round and round. Because again, at the end, at the end of the day, you know, at, when it comes down to it, is seeing my kids now that I've had back then that are adults and seeing what they're doing and seeing the big things that they're doing. And they appreciate it. And they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And they come back and they holler at me. And it's it's just great, dude. It's yeah. great. But yeah, if I could if I could take all the draining and move it the other direction, man, it'd be so much better. Dude, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. Um, I wanted a camera, a, a professional camera right. for my sneakers. Yeah. The wife gave it to me. She gifted it to me for Christmas. I just thought it was a point and shoot. I didn't know that all these knobs had to be right. calibrated for yeah. a one picture. And then the lighting is different mm -hmm. and different. I said, fuck this. Never mind. And then I thought to myself, she worked her ass off for this camera and gifted it to me because I wanted it. Yeah. I'm going to learn this camera. What did I do? I went to YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube taught me photography, bro. Yeah, it really did. And um, I got better. I started getting more and more practice. I started taking pictures of monos. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, yeah. you know, whatever I could. And then my my good friend, uh, Topher, he was already, um, you know, dipping his toe into photography. And he was like, you need to go on a photo shoot. And I go, nah. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, I have a photo shoot of such and such. She, uh, meet us at Tech. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. And he's like, fucker, you're never, ever going to do it if you don't just jump into it. Right. So then I thank him for that, bro. Mm -hmm. Because if he didn't do that for me, who knows where my photography would be right now. Like, yeah. for real, real talk. But I taught myself, and I was building my confidence in it every day. But... I was still wasn't confident to do a photo shoot. And he was like, tag along with me, tag along with me. Nope, nope, nope. And then finally he was like, dude, like he, you know, he set me straight. I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. We went and did it and it was history from there. Yeah. Right? Like, it just, I can't stress enough how confidence and hard work will get you anywhere, man. 
and that fear, that fear is brutal. I, I, we're a fan of horror movies. There ain't nothing scary in those things. Yeah. The fear of life, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And I'll tell you this much, and this is really stuck with me. My, my own children, dude, my children always change my way of thinking. Because I remember the su in summertime we're at the pool. My kids just jump in, bro. They jump in. No, not even carrying. I put one toe in. God, what are you serious? It's freezing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I'm standing there. Like, I'm just standing there and, and, and just my feet are in the water. And my oldest looked at me and goes, Daddy, just jump in. No, dude, it's cold. He goes, jump in. It won't hurt very long. So I jumped in. Just jump in, bro. I mean, my own son, and he like threw me off. I was like, it's like it won't hurt very long. Mm -mm. You got used to it like that. It was just the fear, man. Just do it. Just do it. That's the whole thing about it. You yeah. just got to freaking do it. I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> dude, I, I, uh, I, dude, thank you. Bro. I love you for this, man. Oh, man. And uh, I want to open the floor for you to just talk about anything right now. Um, if it's something that I didn't ask or, or if it's something on your mind, uh, I, I open the floor to you to, to reach out to my audience for, oh. for you. Uh, shoot, man, you know, the only thing I really, really want to talk about is the love of what we do, right? Because I think the, the biggest part for all of this, what always made me want to say that I want to be on your show is nothing but love and respect, right? Because it's not about, it's not about who's better at this and who has this and who, no, dude, this is nothing but love, man, because what we're talking about is, is changing the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To know that, to know what is going to come out of just this episode, because just now I had a thought in my head, no lie. How many people are actually going to listen? How many people are actually going to listen to what I said and what did I contribute to you? Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm thinking that I contribute the best I possibly could. That's just in my head. That's just how I do. So what I want to say, and and because I want, you know, I do, a, I want to share with your permission this that I was did this with you. Go ahead, man. And and so I, I'm still gonna, the whole world needs to know about you. Like I envisioned one day you having your own television show. Oh wow! Like seriously, man. Like seriously, envision you doing this on television. In a in a just in a bigger arena as we put it, bigger arena. And so it's a matter of everybody needs to hear about you. So for me, dude, like knowing you as a friend and now knowing you at this capacity, bro, I gotta give it all to you. Like seriously, straight up. Like mad, mad props to what you're doing because you're doing something that I can't. And for me, I'm like, come on, man. You're changing, you're changing the game. You really are and you're hitting an area that everybody needs to know not only in what you're doing, but just the fact that, bro, the, the power of what laughter can do to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you pop up on my phone, there's a new episode, I'm like, come on, 345, because i got to put this in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I don't want anybody to bother me when I'm listening to your show. And I haven't met half your boys, but, dude, I'm laughing with them and all their stories, the baseball stories, everything that, dude, I'm crying in the car. So... Mad props to you. Everybody needs to hear it. I'm not going to stop promoting you. I'm not going to stop pushing you because everybody needs to hear you. Plain and simple, man. That's all it is. You're doing something big, and the world needs to know it. And so when you have your TV show, just let me come on one time. It's all good. Dude, like, God bless you, bro. Like, you, you, I, I'm, I can't even talk to you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate those words, and... Uh, I don't take them too lightly at all. I take them for what they're worth, and I take them to my heart. And thank you, man. I appreciate the love and respect, bro. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta tell you that, and we've talked about it just a little bit, but this isn't work to me. No, <laughs> like this is a vacation yeah. away from from the madness of, of my life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and my my work schedule is hectic, and then it's sprinkled with photo, photo shoots, mm -hmm. you know, and then. I really, really got to thank God for having a patient wife, bro. Yeah. Because I'm never home, man. Yeah. I'm just never home. And you saying what you just said to me makes it all worth it, bro. 
it just it just solidifies and it, it validates all my hard work that I'm pushing in a direction that's a good direction for oh, everybody, dude. for everyone. Dude, I've gotten in trouble because I played your episode at work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm playing it, it's a little too loud. Yeah. And you know, my secretary, oh, we can hear that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go over there, you don't have to. <laughs> oh, that's my boy JP, uh, sorry. <laughs> he's, he's, he's at church right now and he's preaching. <laughs> I told Ramos. Yes. I said, I said, Ramos, you know that I, I just know that I got a foul mouth because I cuss in my prayers, that bro. Dude, that... Like, and I, and I don't even mean to do it, but right. I'm like, fuck God, <laughs> and and, it, and I'm like, shit God, and I'm like, oh, I need to stop. I need this. Hey. The only person ever, ever that I watched my mouth around, and it was just like. I didn't even know that I was doing it. it was my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. And it was just solely out of respect from yeah. being a kid growing up. And I didn't even realize that I was watching my mouth around right. him. That's right. just how I acted around yeah. because I respected him. So I got much. you. I feel yeah. you on that, man. I got too many people like that, so. Yeah. I hope my mom doesn't <laughs> I'll make sure to send her the Yeah, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> this is good, man. <laughs> but thanks for me and and now that you know that's all out of the way uh promote your podcast shout out anybody you want to shout yeah, out man uh, very cool um uh yeah so it's the success podcast network so if you go to instagram it's um the underscore success underscore podcast uh underscore network mm -hmm. so there that's the that's the social for all the shows mm -hmm. so i'll promote everything on there but you know there's my show success it is what it is um the new show Stacking Jack with uh, my boy Cleet Bell and I, who's also the sponsor. We're having Lori versus the internet, which is his wife. And I got another one that's being worked on, but I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of keeping that one on, you know, on the DL before I release any information. Promote that lawn service. Oh yeah, muscle mowing and landscaping. In Amarillo, uh, in Amarillo right? Texas. Yeah. Yes, he's, uh, he's been doing this for a lot of years now. A lot of years, man. And so like I say, the best one in town. Yeah. And he, he fills up, so right now I'm telling everybody you gotta give him a call to get on the books because they fill up fast, and uh, he does good work. He works well, that's hard. the thing, the, the people that fill up fast, they give a shit. Jeez, you man. know you're gonna get your money's worth. Oh, dude, yeah, he, man, he, and he doesn't play. This yeah. boy does not play. It's like, this is like one of his children. He, yeah, he, he works hard. Hell yeah. And his, his story is another one, dude, and that's, we have an episode on that, him telling his story from to come up with that, that service, and so, um, he's built it into a million dollar company. Yeah. It's plain and simple. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, he's my sponsor, dude, and it's, it's pretty cool. Ask him but, if I can borrow five dollars. I know, I'm going to ask cool. him. He's going right. to yeah, something. something. Man. But, yeah, dude, that's all it is, man. Go, you know, my, uh, Instagram, it's on Twitter under at the Success Podcast. Um, those are really the only two socials that I use. And you drop every. Oh, man, dude. I try to drop at least two a week. Okay. I try to, but the way it's all been going. Um, like I'm, I still need to drop my January ones, but at least two a week is what I try to drop. Sweet. But I, hey, it's all work, man. Hey Let's man, keep doing. like you know, hey, you're. <sighs> so you know, you were talking about people flaking, and and it's just yeah. like when you're relying on a guest and your work schedule, and yeah. then trying to get it recorded. And I get it, bro. There's gonna be weeks that hey man. I tried my best, but there's no episode this week, you know? Oh, gosh, man. Yeah. I'm sitting there looking at the wall with, I'm at a blank. I got nothing to talk yeah. about. I got nothing. I'm just going to try to it's, it's just all being a part of being in the podcast industry. Yeah. Love it, yeah. I love this game more than anything right now. So. Oh, yeah, man. Well, you know, uh, shout out to the Raquels. Yeah. <laughs> Spending this time with us yeah. right here. Uh, right. I don't call my wife by her name I call her Lita so, oh yeah yeah that's but, right that's right I've heard yeah but but that's her name Rico. yeah uh and shout out to happy birthday mom happy birthday Jasmine right, happy birthday. shout out to DJ Kipo shout out to Tigre the Burrito and um you know my boy San Juan uh man I love that dude man. yeah I I I, I want to promote him so much dude because this dude grinded I seen his work ethic yeah. since we were kids, and now like, I don't know. If I'm on the outside looking in, but it looks like his grind is it's a, beautiful. Is working, yeah. you know. And I, I told him, I like, I follow you on your social media and see your vacations, and I'm like, I want to be there. God, right? Like, That's yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I love that dude to death. Shout out to him. 
and everything that he does. I hope everything he does touches gold and, and turns to gold. Right. Shout out to you, bro. I appreciate like, you, bro. I, you too, I hope man. every thing you touch Thank you, bro. turns to gold. Thank bro. you, man. I appreciate that tremendously. For real, man. Again, it's dude, the world is the possibilities are endless. Really yeah. So mad love, dude. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me do this, man. This is like I hey, can take this off my bucket list. But but when we're <laughs> when we're actually fucking around, you need to come back. Man. You right, bro. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm down yeah. for that. So I appreciate that invite, man. And make sure you're off the next day because yeah. it's gonna be a party. Yeah, I'm down, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But man, until next time, guys. Uh, thank you for for everything. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for following me. Uh, I'm now on YouTube, so uh, the yeah. JP Lopez Show podcast on YouTube. Uh, make just. I love you all. Thank you all. Um, you know. Rich and butts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>